Today, we are going to show how to register an instrument on the cloud, configure it and activate it. We are going to use the example of an NSR TW Mark III, although the process for a VSEW Mark II would be very similar. That NSR TW Mark III is connected to the PC via USB. We assume that a cloud subscription has already been purchased and a user account has been set up with a username and password. So with the instrument connected to the PC via USB, the first thing to do is start the instrument manager. You should see a screen like this. The first thing to do is to make sure that there is no data in the instrument. Otherwise, as soon as the instrument connects to the cloud, it will try to upload all that data to the server. This can take a very long time if there is a lot of data. Go to the Wi-Fi tab and press the Cloud Setup button. Do not use the Set Wi-Fi or Set Email buttons. The cloud configuration process will take care of everything in one step. Enter the username that you have chosen for your cloud account. At this point, the instrument connected to the PC is automatically associated to the cloud account. If that instrument was not already associated with the cloud account, it is essential to press the Instrument Config Web Page button. That action creates the configuration page for the instrument on the cloud and navigates to it using the default web browser. Trying to activate an instrument that has not been configured first will result in an error. If that instrument has been used on the cloud before and already has a valid configuration, you can skip this step. Now let's configure the instrument. First, it is always a good idea to give the instrument a specific ID. This will help differentiate between different instruments. It will also help to understand where an alert is coming from. The rest in this first section is only informative. Make sure the active checkmark is checked. Next, set the measurement parameters. The default values are good for most applications. DBA, fast response, recording LMAX LMIN and LEQ at 1 second intervals. Adjust the time zone the instrument is in. Next, adjust the Wi-Fi connection parameters. For the connection interval, there is a trade-off between a short schedule and power consumption. A 10-minute schedule is usually a good choice. In some cases battery life is in short supply. Maybe the battery is not being charged very effectively, or the Wi-Fi access point is far, which consumes more battery at every connection attempt. In those situations a longer connection schedule, such as 1 hour or 8 hour, will help. Make sure the Wi-Fi report active setting is on. Adjust the SSID, password and encryption for the Wi-Fi access point. If you need a delayed start, adjust the recording starts control to a later time and date. Otherwise set it to zero, a date in 1904. This will create an immediate start. Next, adjust the email alert parameters. It is always a good idea to set a low battery alert. Like all iPoly batteries, the battery in the instrument does not fare very well if it is left in a discharged state for too long. Set the email address where the alerts will be sent to. If you need a simple, over-level alert, set the noise threshold, make sure you activate the alerts that you need.
it is also a good idea to limit the number of emails that the instrument can generate in a specified time period. After all, if the measured levels keep triggering the alert, you probably do not want to receive a very large number of emails. Optionally, you can set a secondary alert cycle. This allows you to set a different alert threshold for different time periods. For instance, you may want a more sensitive threshold at night. Or you may want to completely disable the alerts on the weekends. For instance, let's set a main threshold at 90 dB and set a secondary threshold at 80 dB between 9 pm and 7 am. That secondary threshold will take effect every night. After all the parameters have been adjusted, simply press the submit button. Close the web browser and return to the Instrument Manager Cloud configuration window. Press the Activate button. Now the instrument is configured and activated. It will begin to try to connect to the cloud. If it does not start connecting immediately, press the Connect Now button. Observe the connection graph. Make sure that the instrument is able to connect to the Wi-Fi access point and thereafter to the server. The first connection will last about one minute. That is the time it takes for the server to ensure the instrument is completely erased, set its time, and start the recording. Subsequent connections will be much shorter. Before decommissioning an instrument and placing it in long-term storage, it is essential to deactivate it from the cloud. This will ensure that it is in the off state and its battery will not deplete and possibly get damaged over time. Even so, it is important to check the state of charge of the battery at least once every six months. Start the instrument manager. You should see a screen like this. Go to the Wi-Fi tab and press the Cloud Setup button. Enter the username that you have chosen for your cloud account. At this point, the instrument connected to the PC is automatically recognized. Simply press the Deactivate Instrument button. The instrument is now off and can be put in storage until the next time it is used.